Oworoshoke is a waterside community in Keshefe local government area of Lagos State. It is located up north within the mainland part of Lagos and shares boundaries with Bariga, Ifako, Ogudu and the Lagoon. The original settlers of Oworoshoke are the Awuris, who were mostly nomadic farmers and to date a substantial number of residents engage in trading and fishing. Beyond the benefits for livelihood, the lagoon also trickles down into a smaller ecosystem called wetlands. They are the shallow marshy land between the lagoon and vegetation that surrounds Oworoshoki. Unfortunately, the community has continued to expand over the years, and with more development, the rate of encroachment on the wetlands have rapidly increased. Since 1965, about 40% of the wetlands in Lagos have been lost to sand filling and land reclamation activities. The largest to date began in 2017 at Owuru. The Lagos State Government commenced a sand filling project as the first stage to transforming the blighted areas of Owuru Shuki waterfront into one of the biggest transportation, tourism and entertainment hubs in Nigeria. About 29.45 hectares of land in Owuru has successfully been sand filled since 2017, and the result of this and other reclamation attempts has been bittersweet for the Owuru Shoki community. Some residents were able to tell us about themselves and their experiences with the flooding situation in Owuru Shoki, particularly since the sand filling project around the wetlands commenced. Every single year has been the worst, you understand? And, um, you know, since when they started um, sand filling this place, even before they started sand filling, we've been experiencing flood. Most of the time, we had to pack from our former house down to our new house because of that same flood issues, because it's always affecting us. For most, the story has been immensely devastating each year. My experience has been terrible. Whenever a single rain falls, I must pack water and raise up things in my house. Even if it falls, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., I must be awake. There's no time rain falls that I will be sleeping. That's how terrible it is. Claiming the lives and properties of people in their community. It drains children, whereby it claims lives, apart from properties. It claims lives, several lives. Sometimes you see children being flowed in the water many times. According to the Internal Displacement Monitoring Center, an average of 208,000 displacements per year is expected to occur due to flood waters in Nigeria. Residents like Toby have had to either relocate to another street or completely leave Owuru behind. The commissioner, Mr. Tunji Bellu, earlier this year announced that we should expect 250 to 270 days of rainfall in Lagos. And since the rainy season has started, the people of Owuru have struggled. 2020 has been, has been the worst compared to other years. With more than 10 kilometers of road submerged during a heavy downpour, many businesses are affected each year as streets leading to shops are completely flooded and inaccessible. We have um, so many jobs and businesses close to my house, around my house, and on, on the streets, whenever it rains, it's always flooded. And most of the time it enters their shop, affects most of their stuff. Aralomo and Ayetoro are some of the most flooded areas during the rainy season in Owuru. In an area like Akerele area, Lagos streets, then at the back of that Lagos street, close to Oduero area, all those areas are serious flood area. Aralamo, Aralamo, Ayetoro, all those Sibaro streets are also the same, are also having the same problem. Residents on the ground floor bear more of an impact from the flood. I had never in my life seen so by flood to fall to at least six feet of a human being. Maybe you are walking in the, in, in the stream of that water, then you will fall to anybody with five feet. And it is only people that are living upstairs that are enjoying staying up. Those people living ground floor of every building are being flooded. Most residents are unable to leave their homes and struggle to meet up with their daily activities. Whenever it happens, you, you, you may likely stay home throughout that day. 
two, three, four days. Hmm? Not going out, except the water flow away. The situation is often difficult to manage, and residents like Toby cope by packing out the flood waters from their homes. We had to like start packing water outside of my house, straight down to to the to the main to the main even even the main streets. We still have um, water flooded, so there there's no way, no practical solution to which the water would have just have just left. Each year, the people have depended on the promises from the government as a solution. In the year 2019, we started hearing news that uh, uh, we need to work on flood issues. We, we get that every year from the governor that we need to work on flood. And at the end of the day, each governor comes and nothing is said to be done. The lack of commitment through each administration to address the flooding situation seems to be the biggest contribution to the recurring crisis in the world. <laughs> Some residents have even attempted writing to the government about their plight. Sometimes ago, I wrote a letter to the Minister of Environment to tell them about all the canals. They refused to, to yield, to come up. In 2017, the state government began sand filling activities around Owo, and events have played on more negative than positive events for its residents over the years. The, the sand filling has, um, it, it, it has been an advantage and at the same time disadvantage. But when it comes to the advantage part of it, it's just um, say 20%. Now, disadvantage I can see 95% because 20% is such a way that yes, sand filling had made the, the, the community attractive in such a way that people can easily move from one place to another. But when the sand filling started, disadvantage parts of it, it affected community. I can't say a house, community as a whole. The sand filling that is taking place in that place has a development impact, but at the same time, it has its own disadvantages. Depending on the plan that will be taken to that place, nobody ever knew what will happen in the near features. Though the spaces is being sand filled up, but the drainage is not yet cleared till date. Because what I expected that the canal ought to have been cast by the government. And for some, this kind of illegal construction along the drainage in Owuru is to blame for the yearly struggles with flood. Sometimes you will see children being flowed in the water many times. And the cause of all this problem is those illegal construction along the drainage part, most especially Bega Akrele, canal by the Catholic Church, linking to Lagos Street. All these areas are affected places. The people are not aware of what plans the government has for the location, but are extremely concerned about the lack of interest by the government to focus on the drainage issues. What I expected that the canal ought to have been cast by the government. Even if it's not by the government, maybe by the contractor sampling the environment. They need to consider the poor people also. About 60% of streets in Oworoshuki do not have a proper drainage system and most of the gutters are not linked to the natural drainage channels. So when it rains, the water flows back to the street and the sand filling has made it even more difficult for the community whenever it rains. When they were doing the sand filling, whenever it rains, the water that's supposed to pass through to the canal gets back into the house. When it's filled up, it gets into each house. Over 15 years in Uruoshuki, and residents like Sarah and Mrs. Adija believe the lack of drainage in the community has been the biggest problem for residents, especially during the rainy season. 15 to 18 years in Uwuru, and the situation with the drainage system has stayed the same for residents like Sarah. It's um, here, eh? If the rain falls, there is no gutter. No place that the rain used to follow go. If the rain just falls, you just follow entire house. Water is not the problem. It's the roads and the drainage 
that is the biggest problem. Things that are meant to be brought into our environment cannot be brought in when rain falls. As a fishing community, most of the residents have lost their only source of livelihood since the sand filling commenced. Most of the market sellers have been unable to sell because of the drainage problem. If you come for this, most of this place, they used to kill fish. You understand? That's what I know. And in the morning like this, if you come, you see people that is selling and buying markets for this river. While some residents believe the government has made a commendable effort with removing waste from the canal and drainage. The only thing, like I said initially, um, the commissioner has been helpful. And I, and I feel it's a directive from the governor or Lagos State government itself. You know, it started by taking out debts from the canal. So it feels that the more we have debts in the canal, the more we have floods in the community. So the act of removing debts should be able to reduce the flood. And I think it has, they've, that's an internship, that's been helpful in a way. Some residents believe that the government has failed to address the poor drainage situation by not casting the canal. I can easily say that Government are not doing anything. For many years, this canal has been in existence. They failed to cast it. If you go to Shomolu, you see canal being cast all over around. Go to Ikeja, you see the canal is being cast. But here, they will just pack it and leave it like that. Eventually, the people of Oworo had to find a solution within their community. This need led to the establishment of a youth forum as a platform to sensitize themselves on the problem and find a way forward. The, the initiative of our youth program came into play and uh, we started uh, making um, sensitization on how to battle these flood issues. Um, from there, we, although we, we had um, our commissioner, um, may, our own commissioner, his own race in perfect peace, we know him as um, Pepe, Pepe Rizzo, yeah. so he, has, he, he came up with that initiative to like work on the flood issues. He said we should just stop dumping refuse in canals and he came up with the idea of, okay, let's start let's bring an idea whereby um, we will start getting refuse out of the canal. So he came up with that issue and there we see some trailers and machines coming to take out dirty from the canal. Although these groups work closely with the local government to push the state government to action, all efforts seem to be in vain for residents. Both the CDA, the CDC have tried enough through the local government. Times to that number to attract the state government to the problem we are having here. But all efforts in vain. Social media has been a powerful tool for their community to communicate with the government by capturing photos and videos of the events happening in Uwuru. I've not seen something physical from any of individuals than to just send information across you know, on social media, my house is affected and all. And I think with that, it has really been helpful in a little way to send information direct to the, to the government. Community platforms have particularly been crucial in capturing the struggles of the residents and giving some hope. Believing that continuously sharing their story will eventually lead to a more permanent solution for Oworo Shoki. I love what um, Oworo Youth Forum is doing right now and Oworo TV. They are sending information across as at what is happening in Oworo right now. So I believe the best way is for us to still make a perfect information trying to get rich too, because we cannot undo this matter on our own. We have to come together and undo it together. So we need to get more people to pass more information, to get more people that, is, that the community has been affected, to pass information straight to the government so they can come and um, affect the community with solutions. Some residents believe that the solution can only come if the governor is willing to take an active role in particularly improving Oworo Shoki. His Excellency Governor in haste to this our problem. If he himself feels for the citizen, he ought to have asked, where is this environment? He should come and walk through every of the environment, whether it's idle to live with the situation there. Residents like Mrs. Ajida, a provision seller in Awuru, can only hope that the floods do not take away all they have in the community. Ah, Adura, come up for Judy. In Tori Jesu, I only was a pay, 
owo ni fo mi paye remo nitori to mi ba po ah nkan a baje we have seen some communities like Adeni Jadele and Divine Estate built through this process of sand filling gradually deteriorate over the years. As we ignorantly continue these activities that destroy and encroach the wetlands, we risk losing what is left of communities like Owo in a few years. Although many of the community members like us look up to the state government for a solution, Lagosians need to take ownership and protect our communities. The Lagos Wetland Campaign is pushing for a solution we already have in our communities. The wetlands are an underrated part of our communities that absorb excess water during heavy rainfall, provide a source of livelihood to wetland farmers, and have an economic potential through tourism. We need to stop encroachment and direct more resources and policies towards protecting the wetlands. We need to take charge and demand better, not just from the government, but from ourselves. Join the Lagos Wetland Advocacy Group.